cold start. gonna bring in reinforcements. <laughs> You know, I'm super impatient when it comes to surfing. So if the surf is good, I'll put out a call to a couple people I'm trying to, that I want to surf with. And you know, if they're not answering when I'm going, then, you know, I'm not waiting. You know, I hate to be selfish that way, but I just get excited and I get ampy and I, I can't relax, you know? Yeah, I love, I love going to Masonboro and you know, sort of the mission aspect of it because I have to put the boat on and, you know, go drop it in the water and then you get all your gear and you throw it in, in the boat and, you know, just motoring down the, the intercoastal. walking over the dune. It's a really cool aspect of surfing at Mason Row. It's uh, exciting too once you, once you walk over that dune and you see some little, whether it's bombing surf or just some great little peelers, that, you know, either way it makes you stoked. My name is Joshua Curry. My name's Sean Patrick O'Donnell. My name's Tony Silvani. Well, my name is April Zilg, and I am a stand-up paddleboarder. I do a lot of stand-up paddleboard racing and a decent amount of stand-up paddleboard surfing. I'm a professional surfer, and I'm always traveling, competing in a lot of professional venues along the East Coast and uh, the West Coast and all around the, the globe. I own Wrightsville Glassing and SOD surfboards. My name is Dylan Weeks and I'm 13 from Carolina Beach, North Carolina. I would consider myself a professional stand-up paddleboarder. <laughs> I'm Kat Neff, I'm 14 years old and I'm a competitive surfer that lives in Carolina Beach, North Carolina. <laughs> if anybody could be a professional stand-up paddleboarder. <laughs> Uh, my name is Dimitri Talbert. It's Danielle Talbert. Live in Wilmington, North Carolina. Um, I'm Joe Pickett, and I live in Wilmington, North Carolina. And I enjoy surfing the East Coast, predominantly southeastern North Carolina, but um, do like a little bit of New England as well, and uh, love some Pacific surf, but this is home. Southeastern North Carolina is my favorite and where I always want to be. southeastern North Carolina. It's a good surfing spot. It's probably one of the better spots on the East Coast. It's a series of barrier islands which, you know, offer a lot of diversity for, for surfing. We have inlets, sandbars. There's still some spots to go find the uncrowded wave. I feel like the waves here in Carolina Beach are perfect for progressing your surfing level. I'm constantly traveling too, so I'm surfing all over the world and, and uh, testing out new breaks and uh, catching better and better swells all the time. And that's what we do. We, we love to get out there and catch waves all together and be able to um, surf some of the best waves whenever the swells are up. It's a beach that I call home. I mostly surf Carolina Beach, North Carolina. Um, I love it. I grew up surfing down there. I surf Wrightsville Beach too. I started in 71, I was already 15. I started late, but now because I'm 58, I've still surfed a long time. 
and now I encourage people to keep surfing because those of us who are older realize that we can keep surfing. I've surfed um, in upper parts of North Carolina, like the Outer Banks. I've surfed in California recently. I've surfed in um, Florida. I spend a lot of the time here. I think it's really fun. I've always been an island girl. I have lived in Carolina Beach for my whole life. Usually if you hear an East Coast surfer, everybody's just like, oh, the East Coast, you surf on the East Coast? Are there waves out there? I, I've traveled a lot of other places to paddle. I've literally paddled around the entire world. Um, I've paddled in Europe, paddled all over India, the Maldives, Fiji, uh, Indonesia, you know, island hopping through the Pacific back home. I've paddled beautiful clear waters and just nothing's ever the same as paddling at home. So just, I think the camaraderie. I paddle because all my friends paddle. Um, and if all my friends quit paddling, I would probably make new friends that paddle. The fact that Dimitri and I are able to surf together, I think is something that we share. It's so much a part of our life, both our lives. So individual and independent, but at the same time, you know, we don't have to talk for two hours, but we can see each other and enjoy each other's rides and laugh and it's our own and that's a beautiful thing. I discovered stand-up paddling on a vacation to Florida. Loved it the second I hopped on it. I don't know, and it was just a way to get out the frustrations, get some exercise. I don't like to run. If I had to rely on running to exercise, it would never happen. So paddling every single day, it just, it became my greatest hobby. I got better at it, and then I started diversifying, like just from flat water paddling, I got into racing. And then after racing, I wanted to work on my agility, so I got into surfing. And then after surfing, um, I wanted to try white water just to cover all the bases, and so I try that, and I do that as well. I've been paddling for some years now, and I love it. My surfing experience, or my introduction to surfing, was from my father. Uh, who was a competition surfer. He was a, a competitor that won every event. He did longboarding, shortboarding, uh, kneeboarding, bodyboarding, and he placed top first, second place in all those events, which gave him the status of Ironman. He did that for like 10 years in a row, which was cool as a kid. You know, your dad is a surfer and there wasn't many um, fathers that surfed when I was growing up. We surfed all the time. I've done everything from kneeboarding to variations of stand-up pipo, uh, belly boards, and I'm currently into riding uh, finless stand-up body boards. Same thing, no fins, so you're having to learn a whole nother skill set and just that energy in the way of interfacing with the wave and being able to spin out at a moment's notice and to do 360s. Just the slide that you get and it's a way to to give myself a new way to experience it and to just be able to get better at something and it gives me a, a better understanding of how surfboards work. Boards that I've shaped, my little backyard label is Devotion Surfboards. For me, shaping my own boards for the last 10 years or so has been an opportunity for me to, to gain some more knowledge about surfing in general and how everything relates. On my toe side, I've got it set up almost as a split single fin without a rail fin so you can drive down the line and rely on that longer rail line to help give you some momentum. And this is just some of the stuff that I've, I've been working on. Well, this is a, a 12 by 12 shed that I have has become my shaping shed. And it's also just like surfing, it's something that you start out really bad at and you have to keep practicing and you'll have plateaus and then you'll have little victories where things start to tie together and you'll see it all come together. Just get into it and get into that process and just be one in that moment working on the board and be able to see what's in my head come out and it's always something that you're chasing to try and get a little bit better and more refined and I still have a lot to learn but I enjoy the process and, and what it gives me. And so you have that experience crafting the board you know and being a sport where you can manufacture your own equipment there's something to be said in that 
in you know this day and age when everything we get is packaged for our use already and so being able to have a hand in that and how you interact with the ocean is such a good thing you know passing that on to other people what I've learned and you know that keeps alive that 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 uh, be able to do it yourself ethic and then being able to take it out into the ocean and you learn all these different nuances from trying new things it helps to complete the, the practice of surfing. It gives you appreciation for the craftsmen who make this possible because a lot of these aren't coming out of big factories and you know there are one or two guys working in small shops. It's just a way to in enjoy the ocean and just bring all the facets together. Yeah, this is the surf, call it the surf shed. <laughs> Some of these boards are like boards that are collector boards. They've just had, we've just had them in the family for a long time. I mean, I've got these like old single fins. This was a gun that I had when I lived in California. This thing's definitely collected dust being here. It's, we don't get uh, 15 foot surf anymore here, so. But I've made a bunch of these. When I first started shaping, these are the boards I was shaping with these things. And uh, it's pretty cool. You know, shaped it in the shed and uh, made the fins. My, you know, surfing style is I, I just like to surf. To me, I like riding different boards and you know, it's never been about, you know, are you a longboard or a shortboard? I always looked at it as I'm a surfer. I love riding longboards, shortboards, fishes, sort of experimental boards, you know, things like bonzers, and they all ride differently and sort of getting them wired is, is the fun part. It, it's the experience of being on the water, um, being out there. It's just the whole atmosphere of, of surfing that I enjoy. And riding different boards is interesting because, you know, figuring them out and how they ride and their nuances and, and, and which does change your style for what you're riding. And that's just fun. It just, it's, it's once you get a board wired, you're like, oh, you know, I can do this on this board or you know, you just, it's, it's a freedom and it feels good. It's just, it's all about feeling good for me, you know? And, and when I've pulled a maneuver or done a turn in a certain way, um, that's exciting. It gets me stuck, it keeps me going. We have to struggle. I mean, we, we surf wind swells, we're hungry. I think growing up on the East Coast, and if you're a pro surfer from the East Coast, You've had so many days you've struggled just to get better. When you grow up on the East Coast and you have to surf junk, because you have to make your own speed because the waves don't provide it, you learn techniques and skills that transfer into other environments quite well. Like when you, when you are presented with power, you can learn how, rather quickly, you can learn how to, to manage that and enhance your maneuvers and, and carve bigger turns when you do have power in a way. The biggest problem for an East Coast surfer is calming down so he doesn't make mistakes on a perfect wave. You know, you're just so happy. You're like, I gotta do this. So that's, that's the beauty part. And I, I see nothing wrong with growing up on the East Coast. We get very few days where the surf is just really pumping, like where it's amazing. We like to call it double over ankle. It's kind of a joke. We would like it to be waist high, but it rarely is. We like to go out um, before and after hurricanes and other really terrible storms, which gives us a pretty bad name. There's often plenty of surf here for younger, for younger people, and they can build skills and, um, and be challenged, but not frightened. Uh, un unless and until hurricanes come, and then we have to uh, set boundaries for our children that 
might otherwise get themselves into trouble. Being an East Coast surfer, sometimes you get bagged down, but then sometimes it's just like that motivation to pursue it even more. We have such a varying nature of of breaks and, and the way that they face and what swell is favorable, what wind is favorable. So you have all these options and when you have a local knowledge on how, how all of those come together, you know, you can travel to, to different areas within an hour and get a totally different wave than what you may have at home. And the days when it's on, I've, I've yet to find some place that gets like coastal North Carolina when it's sheet oil glass and no wind and breaking perfectly on a sandbar and little barrels. Beggars can't be choosers, you know, like, I live at the beach. It's like the best. One of my favorite places to surf is the uh, Fort Fisher, the Cove. It's most fickled wave. It only breaks maybe six times, maybe ten times out of the year. But when it's going off, it, it's the best, you know, it's one of the best waves in the country. I mean, all the way from California, everywhere. And it's, it's about a hundred you know, 150 yard ride, it's a, I'm goofy footed, so it's a left, so it's my front side attack. And I mean, I've, I've caught that place solid, true, 10 to 12 foot, and it just me and one other guy out and for four hours. And it's still to this day, it's my best session ever. I mean, I've traveled, I've gone to Mexico, California, I've gone to Trinidad, I've gone through the few little spots in the Bahamas and it's like, and I'll surf, I'll surf home when that wave's going off. Um, I don't want to be anywhere else but that spot. I'm a breaker. No matter how bad of a day you're having, doesn't matter what's going on in your life, you can go out into the ocean and feel the energy and just become peace with Mother Nature and everything will be okay. Probably spoiling when I sing to you. It's something about the ocean and Mother Nature that will grab a hold of you. And you know, it's the same feeling if you climb a mountain and see this beautiful, just everything. You just like, you feel like you're on the edge of the world. I mean, and that's what it's like. I mean, the ocean gives you life by providing food, but it can take your life in a rip current and, you know, or holding you down. And I mean, that's the beauty part of the ocean. I mean, it's a little bit of a danger, but it's a little bit of just, can I beat this danger? Surfing is so relaxing and soothing, just the salt water, the air running through my hair. And it's just so soulful. It, once I get in the water, I like to rub my hands and then I just go into this different person to where you're nothing besides surfing. It is my life. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a lifestyle that, uh, that innervates every, every part of, of my day to day. Right now, surfing fits into my life in that it's a filter that we live our lives through. Uh, we rely on the tide, we rely on the wind, we aren't necessarily set by uh, a human clock. This is everything, it's nature and it's surfing and it's going fast, it's like skateboarding and it's, there's an intellectual side and understanding how everything works, you know, the whole physics behind it and being with the rhythm of the ocean and having to race the speed of energy to get down on the face of a wave, it's, it's all mixed in there in a wonderful bag of awesomeness. <laughs> The biggest thing that hooks a lot of people with surfing is seeing that it's a, a, a great way to be active, stay fit, um, it's healthy, it's relaxing on the mind. You can take your stress out in the water and be able to relieve everything. Um, not only that, but just the most exhilarating you know, ride for your first ride, standing up on a surfboard and making the slope down the face of the wave. and dropping in and you're up on your feet riding them I and that's just something to me that always stood out. I just don't want to say that it feels like it, you're walking on water. Um, it does feel, I mean it's like a combination of, of surfing and kayaking and canoeing and all those water sports that people really love but it's low impact, it can be 
as exciting or as mellow as you want it to be. Like if you want to go charge ocean waves or whitewater, you can, and it can be a really extreme sport. Or if you want it to be on water meditation, you want it to be, you know, you can do yoga on a stand-up paddleboard. It's just a really excellent way to be on the water. The thing that I like about surfing is that it's, it's a practice and it has its rituals. There are things that you do to get ready and things that you do at the shore and when you paddle out. And this is going to sound ridiculous is I don't have to wear shoes. I hate to wear shoes. <laughs> and from the time you hit the pavement and those bare feet and even the smell of wax is like all part of it. Like you can start feeling it in your stomach, particularly if there's good waves. The way that folks get up in the morning and put their board in the water and go out and recreate for 30 minutes or an hour and then rinse off at the shower and put their work clothes on and go to the office. Uh, that's the way people here live. That's the way people in California live. That's, that's the way people in Hawaii live. You incorporate the activity into your daily life you, some people go to the gym, some people put on their running shoes. It, it turns into the same, you know, I'm gonna go for a surf. Heck, I might even catch a wave. <laughs> and when I was learning to surf, I had friends, cause I lived, this is in this neighborhood, this is where I lived. The fellas would go, oh, there's no surf. We're not going surfing. And I bought into that. I could kick myself. And most of the time you're looking at the ocean and you're seeing sky and water and nothing man-made. You may see sea life, dolphins, jellyfish, stingrays. It's nature and it's, it, that face of nature changes and it can be the most calm, mellow place in the world. And then at the same time can also come to life. It's the drive to the beach, listening to the right song. It sounds so corny and cliche, but I like to sing it the entire time I'm out there, if it's the right one. It's a way to just live in the moment and the just the moment when you catch a wave and you're feeling that energy underneath you. There's nothing like that that I've found in the world that gives me the same type of feeling. Surfing to me, I love it because no one, you can't get it from any other sport. You can't, on a soccer field, you can't go out and feel a wave like take you into it. And then you can't feel the way that like the whole, you think it's safe underwater and then it just moves. You can't feel that in any other sport and I just love that about it. Great. mornings right when the sun's coming out it doesn't get much better than that if you catch that first wave it's like something that just grabs a hold of your soul and never lets go the foam has this funny salt smell that's real warm in the summertime and it's one of my favorite smells in the ocean I see it more as an on-water meditation like it's a time to get away from everything walking to the beach watching it you know paddling out waiting for your first wave, catching your first wave. It's just so fun to have all your friends by your side, to be laughing. Trading off waves back and forth and watching them, you know, catch a killer wave and then you catch a good wave. When it all comes down, you know, we're just out there playing in the waves and it, it really isn't that serious. And in this day and age where we are driven by clocks and data and interfacing with digital inputs, it's a good way to disassociate yourself from that modern life and to really stop, take a breath, and enjoy nature and your place in it. You never feel like you do in the water because when you're in the water, you feel almost bigger and you feel like, you feel like you're a part of something and it really connects with you. Oh,
ocean when can't discern between present moment and ourselves. Can't discern between present moment and ourselves. My whole goal now is just to be the best craftsman I can be. I can always become a better shaper. I can always become a better glasser. I mean, if you would have told me 23 years ago I'd still be building surfboards and doing what I do, I would have probably looked at you as a punk kid and be like, whatever, I ain't never doing nothing for 20 years. But it's, it's like a blink of an eye. And you know, I'm still trying to learn the craft and I'm still trying to get better. And to see what kids are doing on my boards it, it just stokes me out. I mean, it stokes me out just as much as paddling out and surfing, you know, and seeing these kids go as far as they can go in their amateur and pro careers. That's what it's all about. It's not about me. It's not about the logo. It's just about spreading the stoke. No more attitudes. You know, when I was younger, it was the 90s. It was all about attitudes and tribal tattoos and, you know, punch you in the face and, you know, yelling at you. And now it's like, I look at all the energy that I wasted instead of just focusing in on having fun and just being a, it's easier being a nice guy than being a a-hole. So that's what I'm going for these days. I'm getting old. I don't have to do anything else. All I have to do is surf and it keeps me happy and healthy. It's good for my head, it's good for my body. I feel like I have a, a, a lot in life and uh, it, I'm very grateful for that and the amount of, um, things that are involved in my life and with friends, family, and having a, you know, a home to live in close to the beach, that's gotta be one of the best lifestyles ever. Um, walk, waking up and being a block and a half away from the ocean, which I call home, so this is, this is the life. It's, it's hard to say whether it was stand-up paddling or spending a year in India that kind of made me feel more complete as a person, but I don't feel like I need anything else. Um, you know, like you hear your parents say, oh, you know, my daughter went, went to all these years of school and now she's a, just a paddler. Just a paddler, I'm happy to be. I don't need anything else. I, I value a simple life. I value my friends and I, I value my time on the water. I don't need to make a million dollars. I don't need a six-figure job. I don't need to publish a bunch of scientific papers. I don't need to be the world's top paddler. So I'm a believer in what you have an affinity for. Why make your life harder? Just go with what you, you know, go with what you already enjoy. I've come to surfing more and more. I'm drawn more and more to it rather than less and less. I love it, man. It's just spreading the stoke and just being happy and that's what life's all about you know don't let the little things get to you who cares somebody cuts you off what is it going to prove what well, you're going to catch them at the next red light anyway so you got the jokes on them you know what i mean so it's like and then you can laugh at them and wave and hey caught up with you and i think that's what a lot of people miss out on for a full life they think that you have to make more money to to get more stuff to feel, like to fill this void, and I don't have a void. I think overall what we're meant here to do is to, to just be good to each other and to respect people and respect the planet that we're on and not get caught up in 
some of the, the rat race and some of the other distractions that take away from just being able to enjoy what you have in the moment and to be able to appreciate it and really value the time that you have and how you spend it rather than chasing after some goal that is monetary or not really substantial in the long run. Wouldn't change a thing. I have surrounded myself with some amazing people and I got rid of all the negativity in my life and it's an amazing thing. It's waking up happy and being going to bed happy, I mean that's, can't ask for anything more. And so I think being able to kind of paddle out and get rid of all the other noise and have the quiet time because it's not a place where you feel focused on your problems at all. I don't know how it works, but when you're out there, that goes, that just goes completely away. Um, and it's not something conscious that you think about. It's just you get out there and all of a sudden your mind is looking at swell coming in and you're waiting for the next wave. And when you catch a wave, your adrenaline pumps and then you're thinking about that wave, how fun it was and what the ne next one's gonna be about or what the next one's gonna be like. And then that recharges your battery so that when you come in, you've had time to be yourself again in that you just find peace at that moment and you're brought back to the moment, really, I guess is what it is. You're brought back to the moment. I think relationships is the most important part of why we're here and what we're meant to do because it's really all that matters at that moment and it's gonna live forever for somebody. So that the meaning of life is to find your gift and then the purpose is to give it away. I do believe that. Um, I would hope that my gift is either stand up paddling or something on the water and that I get to spend the rest of my life sharing that love that even if it's you know not a gift gift like I just want to share it with others to do that for the rest of my life it would be a gift for me as well Just what I need You are just what I need Just what I need You are just what I need Yeah Give it a little boost. Something super fun.